Okay, okay, so we are moving on to question seven, right? This is another functions question, but this time it has to do with a bit of sketching, right? So here they want you to translate an equation, which I always refer to as a mathematical sentence, right? Into a graphical form, okay? So let's jump in. It says, sketch the graphs of f of x equals 3x plus 1. Now, I mean 3 to the power of x plus 1. Important to say it correctly. So we know here that it's exponential because the properties of an exponential is that you have a variable or you have x, the variable that we're looking at in this specific equation, in the exponent, right? But here we see that there's a shift, right? So we know that our exponential is going to be shifted in some way. We see that this 3, the base value here, is greater than 1. So we're expecting to have a exponential that's shaped like this. Okay, we just have to find where the asymptote is, right? Because there's no shifts in the y, the asymptote we expect to be the x-axis, okay? I'm, I'm telling you properties of an exponential that you should know. If you're like, ah, oh, Margs, I have no idea what you're talking about, go back and revise your exponential properties, right? Because I'm literally pulling out what we would expect. If there was maybe, let's say if it was 3x plus 1 and you plus then 2, right? Then your asymptote would shift. But here, we don't have anything that we're adding to this overall term, okay? The only shift we have is actually for the x, which means we're just shifting it along the x-axis, okay? We're not shifting it along the y at all, okay? Exponential. Then it says g of x equals 3 to the power of 2x. So again, it's exponential, but our variable has a coefficient, right? So it just means that our rate at which it increases, right, is going to be two times what it would be if there was nothing, if there was, well, not nothing, if there was just a one in front of the x, okay? So that's that. It says we must do it on the same set of axes. And it says show any asymptotes, intercepts with the axes, and points of intersection clearly. So it's actually quite a few things they're asking us to do, and it's for six marks. I'm going to sketch in pen. Please don't do that. Um, sketch in pencil. I just don't have a pencil. So I'm going to be living on the wild side of life and uh, sketching in pen. Okay, so asymptotes. Both of the asymptotes, the y asymptotes, right, of both of these graphs is where x equals zero. Because there is no shift in the y for each for either of them, right? Like I showed over here, right? And it's literally just going to be the x-axis. This is a property of um, exponents. So we have that, right? Then let's get the y. Let's get the y-intercept. Okay, for both of them, right? So we know the y-intercepts with x equals zero. So if we have f of zero. 3, 0, plus 1, so that's going to be 3 to the 1, so that's that, right? And for g at 0, we have 3 to the power of 2 times by 0, which would be 3 to the power of 0, which equals 1, okay? Anything to the power of 0 always equals 1, okay, perfect. So now we have that. Again, as I said, both of these graphs have this shape here. If it is a fraction, right, so if these base 3s were less than 1, then you would have an exponent, exponential graph going that way, right? But because it's greater than 1, right, we know that both of these graphs are going to go this way. Okay, so we've worked out our asymptotes for both the graphs. We've worked out our y-intercept. Excuse me. Um, there's no in x-intercept here. Oh, there's like bugs everywhere here. Okay, then we, we've got our y-asymptote. We've got the, um, well, you don't have to call it y-asymptote. You can just call it the asymptote. Is where x equals zero. We have the y-intercept. So all we need to do now is the point of intersection. So we want to know where f of x equals g of x, right? I'm just going to say yeah, intercept so you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so just sub in each of the actual... Um, uh, equations and let's solve. They have the same base, so we know when they have the same base, we can drop the base, right? And now, drop the base. I can think of better ways to drop the base than exponents, but that is how we do that with exponents. That's a rule. If the bases are the same, you drop the base and then you just work with the exponents. So here we get negative x equals negative 1, so x is just going to equal 1. Okay, so we've got the x value for where they intercept. So let's just quickly get 
the y value for where they intercept. Okay, which is 3 to the power of 2, which is 9. Okay, let's just check that it's the same for g, because sometimes we can do like little mistakes in our workings. Okay, perfect. So the point of intersection is 1 and 9. So now we have all our information that we need to draw our graph. Okay, so we're in a good place. We've got all the things we wanted, they've asked us for. So we've got the asymptote, we've got the intercepts, and we've got the points of intersection. So we've done everything they want us to do. All we have to do now is draw the graphs. Okay, so unfortunately it's not on the same page. We're going to have to be doing a bit of flipping, but that's okay. So we said the y-intercept, so let's just write that again. So we have f of x equals 3x plus, ooh, or plus 1 g of x equals 3 to the power of 2x. So for f of x, we said what was, so the asymptote is, is here for both of them on the x-axis. The y-intercept for f is going to be 3, okay? So that's going to be 3 and, oh, sorry. Really made, you see, I already made a mistake. 0 and 3, sorry, because we know that x equals 0 for the y-intercept. Then for our guy G is 1, okay? So this is where G is going to be. It's going to be 0 and 1, okay? We know that both of them are going to go along the x-axis there, right, as an asymptote. But let's just put in the point of intersection. We said the point of intersection was 1 and 9. So let's just check that's correct. 1 and 9, perfect. So let's just put that in. 1 and 9. Nine. Okay, so now we need to draw it, but we need to see what is on top and what is underneath and how it actually looks. So we know that this, this point is going to connect with this point over there. That's a dreadful line. I should have definitely done this in. And this is going to go like that. Okay, so that is going to go like that. And that's going to go like that. Okay, and obviously these can... Um, Sorry, that can... Ooh, jeepers creepers. That's a hideous drawing. Okay, but that's what it looks like. It should actually go like there. But they mainly want you to show those main points, okay? And then also just indicate that this is an asymptote. You can maybe do that in a different color. If you want, do it like that and say, you know, x equals zero. I mean, sorry, that's y equals zero. Ooh, did I say x equals zero? Ah, that's terrible. It's x axis right, or the y equals zero. Apologies, right, got confused between the two. So it's x-axis or the y equals zero, okay? That's important. So that's where the asymptote is, okay? Then let's see if there's anything else we need to do. We've labeled our points, okay? We have put in our intercept, we have showed our, our um, asymptote, perfect. So we've done everything. Don't do your drawing as ugly as I did, but we showed all the key points. Also important to label, right? So that's F and that's G. Okay, you can do them in different colors if you want um, to just to differentiate them, right? But either way, that's the sort of general form you should get, okay? So I think that's all for this. Let's now go to the last question of this question. So it says, rewrite the equation A to the power of 2X equals 3 to the power of x plus 1. Now, what's important here, right, is that we don't have bases that are the same. So we can't just drop them and make it equal equal to each other, right? We're going to have to look at log. Now, you might be saying, jeepers, the sky log just like appears everywhere. And you wouldn't be wrong because he does. He comes in quite a lot, right? And if you don't understand your log rules, you have to go revise them. Okay, so I'm going to log both sides, right? And remember, when we log both sides, right, our exponents can come forward. Okay, so we want to get, just a reminder, we must write it in the form x equals. So we want you to get these x's by themselves. So we're going to have um, two, let me just double check here. We're going to have 2x log a equals x log 3 plus log 3. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So now we're going to bring all the x's to the same side. We're going to say 2x 
log a minus um, x log 3. And then we're going to have equals log 3. So now we need to get the x's out, right? So let's put this. Remember now we're doing our log rules again, which is quite important, right? So we're going to, we want to get x by itself here. So I'm going to rewrite this as x log a squared. So I'm putting one of the exponents back up there, right? Just to help us get it in a form that we can manipulate. Now, just because you can bring it forward doesn't mean you have to, okay? So what I've done is I brought it forward here. I realized that actually I would like to factorize this now, take x out and get it in this equation in terms of x. So I put that 2 back at the top there, which is completely fine. You don't have to take every aspect, right? It's testing whether you understand the nuances of log, right? And then we can now factorize, right, by taking, ooh, I just said factorize and I left it in, right? By taking out the, the common factor, which in this case is x, then x is going to equal log 3 over log a squared minus log 3. Okay, so again, you must be very familiar with the different ways that we can use log. What we've seen log, how we've seen log manifest in this paper was in finance. Then we saw it in the log graph in the, in the previous um, functions question. And now we're seeing it as a way of manipulating uh, exponential equation in order to get or to write it in a form where it's x equals something. So we've written it in the form as x equals this equation here, right? So we would have met all the criteria that they've asked us. Importantly here with the sketch, it's just important to read the different requirements that they have, okay? So that's the whole of the question. I hope that was helpful um, and that you were able to follow through with me. Again, when I make mistakes, it's good to make note of when I make mistakes and be like, okay, I mustn't do that, right? And that's why I keep these mistakes in the videos because I want you to see me making mistakes so that you don't make those mistakes. Okay, I hope that was helpful um, and I'll see you in the next one.